This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Now that we're leaving Los Santos behind us as we move on to Vice City and GTA 6, we're left to wonder what Vice City will be like. Hot diggity dog! This place is magnificent! The GTA community have come together to create an accurate map of the GTA 6 state of Leonida based on the trailer and leaks. These coordinates are scale accurate based on the leaks, so we're able to compare the size of the new map with previous GTA maps. As we look at the GTA 6 map, we can look at it from two different conceptual viewpoints. Number one, the map, the map itself, its size, what it's based on, and that sort of thing. Number two, the magic that special thing that makes the map stand out from other game worlds and other games. This model of the map is based on everything we have access to at the moment, all of the leaks and trailer shots. With what we have and know now, we're able to see roughly how big the map should be. Compared to GTA 5 and GTA 4, this is what that looks like. We don't know for a fact what goes on beyond the northern area of the map, or if this is even correct. Many people are expecting this to be the biggest, most detailed GTA map, but a comparison of the GTA 5 map and the GTA 6 map reveals a similar play area. But while it may seem similarly sized, it's possible the map may be more spacious in the northern and southern directions. There's also the possibility that this may be the first GTA map to be connected to a mainland continent, rather than it being an island. This is something Rockstar just recently did with Red Dead Redemption 2. This opens the game world up to the possibility of map expansions in the future. I've made an illustrative example to give you an idea of the sense of scale that this game will have. This is the time comparison side by side that it would take to fly a helicopter from one end of Leonida to the other. When the game comes out, it'll be interesting to see how accurate this timing is. While size matters, it's not always just the size of the map that makes the map fun. It's what they do with that space. GTA 5 has a pretty varied map, but I never found myself very interested in the desert areas. A bunch of trailer park towns and two low-grade airports did not make going out there any fun. If Rockstar had placed another city at the northern point of GTA 5, like San Fierro, then the map would have been perfect. GTA 6 may change things here, with the possibility of them including more cities than just Vice City. We officially know of two cities, Vice City, located to the east, and Port Gellhorn, to the west. It's also possible that most of the beginning of the story will take place in Port Gellhorn. The actual names of these locations are less important Important to me. What matters more is the possibility of more cities to make travel throughout the map more worthwhile. They may also include more underwater attractions like they did in GTA 5. For instance, maybe they'll do their own version of the Christ of the Abyss in the Gator Keys, but this time it'll be a statue of the Epsilon program's Chris Formage. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made, and it's available for free right now on PC and consoles. It offers more than 2,500 vehicles to fight with, like tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships. These vehicles range from biplanes and armored cars from the 1920s to fighter jets from today. The game is immersive, with incredibly detailed vehicles, realistic graphics, and authentic sounds which all work together to make you feel the power of each war machine you operate. The best aspect of War Thunder is it has one of the most sophisticated vehicle damage models in gaming. Each vehicle is intricately modeled down to its individual components, with real engines, fuel tanks, weapons, and crew. This means that each one of these hit points is susceptible to damage or being disabled. Where you aim matters, and this damage can be seen in x-ray view after damage occurs. Join today and become part of a global community exceeding 70 million players, engaging in thrilling PvP battles and immersing yourself in the world of War Thunder. War Thunder is available now on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and the previous console generation. Play War Thunder now and register using the link in my description to receive a huge huge free bonus pack which includes multiple premium vehicles, premium account boosters, and much more. While the map itself is fun to consider, there's more to a Rockstar Games map than just the geometry that makes it up. Map design for a game like GTA is full on. You have to create an entire virtual world. They cover everything from power plants, power stations, fast food, water treatment facilities, military bases, government buildings, car washes, banks, 
car dealerships, airports, trains, subways, bus stations, residential areas, universities, casinos, racetracks, hotels, bars, clubs, restaurants, gas stations, stores, malls, basically just every single thing that makes up a modern day society. These buildings are not copy and pasted duplicates. They are completely original areas. In other words, you don't see the same buildings littered throughout the entire map in a lazy game development kind of way. If you do see a duplicated building, it's in a place that makes sense, like an apartment lot or a neighborhood filled with suburban homes, which would all use similar blueprints in real life. When Rockstar sets out to create a new location for a GTA game, they scout the location they're planning to inspire it off of. They send a team to the location to study and gather material that can be used as a reference for the art teams. I don't know if this leak was real or not, but about four years ago, there was apparently a leak that showed a document supposedly from a location manager for scouting locations at Film Miami, organizing scouts on behalf of Rockstar Games. To add merit to the leak, the woman, Leah Sokolowski, said this on a podcast. I've also been very fortunate to to, to get a large client that has hired me to arrange basically site tours and visits. It's a digital media company and I've signed an NDA so I can't disclose who it is, but they've been exploring various areas of our state and of other states in the southeast. And I've been planning and arranging those visits for their personnel and that's been kind of a very interesting expansion of what I normally do. All this is to say, there's a lot of work that goes into researching these locations and building these worlds. That's why when you look at Los Santos and compare it to Los Angeles, the connection to the source material is clear as day. But what else makes their worlds stand out? What is the formula Rockstar uses that make their worlds seem lifelike? The answer can be illustrated by looking at their worlds and stripping away each element of them. Take Star Junction from GTA 4, a game from 2008. The world is moving, filled with life, thanks to the NPCs that populate the environment. Pedestrians walk and vehicles move through the scene. By the way, a patent was made public about AI systems for traffic in GTA 6 that we'll cover later, but it completely revamps the systems they've been using in previous games and changes how the AI act when they're driving cars. But back to GTA 4, if we remove the NPCs, we're still left with a lifelike environment. This is thanks to the various weather conditions Rockstar implements into their worlds. If we ignore the weather, we still notice the content that fills the screen. Billboards, advertisements, functional streetlights, and more. These things are all referenced throughout the game world. A Sprunk sign can not only be seen as an offhand billboard ad, it can also be seen on vending machines, on a store shelf, a TV advertisement, drunk from a can, heard on a radio advert, spoken about from a pedestrian on the street, or seen in a cutscene. It doesn't stop at drink brands, car brands, street names, TV channels, TV personalities, religions, and more are all fully realized. Characters will name the street they're on to police dispatch. The radio stations will phase out to other stations if you travel outside the area those stations service. NPCs in Red Dead Redemption will go about their entire day if you follow them around. Milk is delivered daily to the towns. Towns function realistically. For instance, a large farm in Red Dead 2 has employees arrive to work the day, and the farm actually supplies oranges to other cities. The world is alive not only because it looks good, has fake people populating it, and features advertisements. After all, other games do the same thing. It's alive because these things are built upon each other. Each element validates the other. So much so that you can't help but believe that these intricately weaved experiences are real. GTA 6 will undoubtedly break new barriers when it comes to this. From the first trailer alone, we've already seen a detailed social media system that was packed with rockstar humor. This shows that Rockstar Games is changing with the times. They're recreating a modern day world, showing the sad reality we live in through the goggles of parody. Unfortunately, with the TikTok generation, it's hard to even consider this a parody. Because it feels like we're living in a parody these days. It's sad to know that everything in the trailer is just actually based on real life stuff. If the patents Take 2 filed are going to be used in GTA 6, which they most likely are, then that means we'll see the most advanced driving AI in a GTA game. Thanks to JLoss on Reddit, we're able to more clearly understand the complicated writings in the patents. 
How the AI that runs now works is it scans its local environment frame by frame with CPU resources. It scans for obstructions with each frame, each frame forgetting what it learned the previous frame. This limits the AI to reacting in the moment to every encounter, with a major lack of situational awareness. In the new system, the AI will have much more situational awareness. What's more, the NPCs will still exist even when they aren't being rendered. The advancements also mean that the game will be capable of having many many more cars on screen. Each driver NPC will also have their own profile of driving characteristics along with the cars they drive. There's a lot to go over in the patent, you could probably make a 15 minute video just talking about these updates, but that would be cooler to explore once the game is released and you can actually see these features in action. We know what Rockstar was able to accomplish in the past. Their track record is unbeatable. The worlds they built are vast and living. But what kind of things are we hoping to see in GTA 6? Rockstar themselves said their goal is to always significantly move beyond what they previously delivered, and Red Dead 2 was a masterpiece. So when it comes to the game world we'll see in GTA 6, what things will they improve on? At the heart of a good map is the exploration it offers the player, the fun it delivers to the player when they're in it. Some ways that could push GTA 6's game world further than ever before would be to add more enterable buildings, side activities, house customization, animal life, realistic NPCs, and larger online lobbies. Of all of these, more enterable buildings may be the most important. The vertical space that's being wasted in an area like Vice City is insane. Hollow buildings serve only as an illusion. Rather than building more onto the game world, they create a sense of emptiness and disconnect. This is one of the only lacking qualities in a Rockstar map. While other elements of their game worlds are fully realized, like movie stars, radio personalities, road names, products, car brands, and more, their buildings are just empty, hollow vessels. In GTA Online, you have to wait through a loading screen to enter any of these newly added interiors. It's likely impossible for now, but one day, it would be awesome to see fully enterable buildings in a game like GTA. I already have an entire video on fully enterable buildings in gaming, so I won't rehash all of those ideas again, but it would be great to see more buildings that we can enter in GTA 6. Aside from that, the animal life from Red Dead 2 would be amazing to see in a GTA game. We've already seen an absurd amount of animals in the trailer, so it's safe to assume that we'll have something similar to Red Dead 2's animal life. That aspect made areas that would typically be void of any entertainment in a video game, like a forest, fun to explore and hunt in. Advanced NPCs that you can follow would be fun too. I want to see where they're going. I want to follow them around, see that they're actually fulfilling day-to-day -day tasks, rather than driving in loops endlessly. The Leonida map is easily the most exciting aspect of GTA 6 to me. The years we'll spend exploring the map, and the things we'll still yet discover years after the game releases, are the coolest part of a GTA release. The updated map files for this video are available for free to download in the description. This will be version 2 of my 3D map model of Leonida. This model in all of its accuracy is all thanks to the GTA 6 mapping community. Dupesor's map is the blueprint for which I was able to create this model. As more comes out for the game, we can look at this model and make updates. The 2D community map is constantly changing and updating. It'll be fun to see how close or how far off we were when the game finally releases. If you liked this video, check out my other video, Fully Enterable Buildings in Gaming, if you want to see a more in-depth breakdown of the benefits that would bring to gaming. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can play War Thunder for free on your platform of choice and register using the link in my description to get those free bonuses. You don't want to miss out on the fun action that War Thunder offers.